very happy birth month to Playboy, whose first issue hit shelves in December 1953. It had the deluxe price tag of 50 cents, and you only had to go as far as page three to learn this was not a family magazine. It even advised potential female readers to return to their ladies' home companions. Okay, it was the 50s, but even back then, there were a few familiar features, like party jokes, the Playboy Bunny, fiction from notable authors, and a sweetheart of the month. Marilyn Monroe, of course, appearing in a nude photo that Hef bought from a local calendar maker. Despite all this, Hef wasn't convinced of the magazine's success. He only printed up about 50,000 of the first issue. In fact, Marilyn had to buy her copy at a newsstand. And if you happen to have one, hang on to it. This original copy, which looks um, pretty used, recently fetched almost $3,000 at auction. Now that Playboy is no longer going to be featuring nudity in its pages, this is a good time to remember that Playboy has always been about much more. Because it was in December 1962 that Heft began to spell out the Playboy philosophy. It was the first in a series of essays that even Heft himself called a sometimes rambling, disorganized discourse. And sex took a back seat as Heft vigorously defended the separation of church and state, free market capitalism, free expression, and the concept of the uncommon man. Hef continued publishing the pieces over the next four years, and soon he famously found himself defending the philosophy on firing line with William Buckley and hosting a live radio religious roundtable alongside a priest, a rabbi, and an Episcopal minister. Did they walk into a bar? Anyway, when it was all said and done, the Playboy philosophy totaled 25 chapters and almost 160 pages, and zero nude women. As every poker player knows, even a great pair is no match for a three of a kind. Like the one Playboy had in December 1998, when Nicole, Erica, and Jacqueline Dom became the first triplets to be named Playmates of the Month. In their pictorial, they described their life as being, quote, like a TV show. And they would go on to appear in a few, including Family Feud, where they won almost 10 grand, along with their dad. Later, they were a winning team on the reality show House Wars, with their dad. In fact, the triplets first came to Playboy's attention when they were encouraged to try out for a Girls of the Big Ten spread by their dad. By the way, speaking of dads, you probably heard of Erica's father-in-law. It's Dr. Phil. And as a doctor, he knows how rare an occurrence identical triplets can be. Try one in 200 million. And that's this month in Playboy history. ...of the internet. That's because Lena Centerfold from the November 1972 Playboy has since become legendary in the field of digital photography. It was shortly after her appearance in Playboy that a USC engineer was conducting research into digital imaging. Typically.